What's important to you? Okay. Uh, in life in general, or right? What's important to you? Yes. For me, myself, the most important thing to me is that souls come out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of light, which is which is God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, I think there's no nothing in my life means more to me than to see that happen. And also, I guess even above that, not I guess, but above that, that I am pleasing to God and that I'm doing the right thing by him. What um I I um I noticed that in your in your title of your ministry you have the word culture, faith culture. why yeah. culture? Uh, the idea is that it comes from the book of Revelation where it deals with when you look at the picture of heaven, it says he saw out of every nation, every tongue and every kindred people worshiping at once. And that's what the theme of it is behind faith, the structure of belief of all cultures coming together to worship the one God. But you, you, I get, you do agree, though, that God wants us to overcome culture. We should only love him and not identify with anything else or anyone else but him, right? I agree the kingdom should be over culture, absolutely. Yeah. And do do the people understand that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the ones that I get a chance to serve, yeah. Right on. Did you? I, I actually have a message called Kingdom Over Culture. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. And, and, and the primary message in that is what? The point in that is what? Basically, basically... We can't be fooled by the agenda of culture. Whatever whatever agendas culture put out, whether it's civil thing, whether it's political thing, whether yeah. wh- whatever culture puts up, we have the value kingdom above that. And so what's wrong with the blacks? They are so into their culture and they hate white people, blame them so much and begging and whining and violent and committing crime. Why don't they understand that it's about the spirit and not about the color? What's wrong with the blacks? I think we as black, we can't understand unless we we're born again. When you're born one thing, okay, you come up with a certain idea about how life should work. But when you're born again, then your whole perspective changed. I was once that person who blamed the white man for everything, yeah. who, who thought somebody's holding me back, you know. Uh, but when I became born again, I said it's impossible for me to be a victor and a victim at the same time. That's right. Why did you think that in the beginning that wife was holding you back? What made you think that? My parents told me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I understand what you're saying. A lot of black parents are telling their children that. Mm-hmm. And these yeah. parents are yeah. calling themselves Christian, too, and yet they're teaching that to their children. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a person that hasn't been truly born again. Or if they say, oh, you know, uh, Christianity is the white man's God. Well, that's a person, you know, literally, uh, not to get too theological, but Jews had it first. Then Ethiopians had it, then Italians, you know. So actually, people of a darker complected uh, pigmentation had it before that. So that's just uh, upbringing. And what do they say when you try to tell them the truth about that situation? Do they accept it or they they reject you with that truth? Uh, it just depends on which crowd I'm speaking with. You know, some crowd, the younger crowd, who 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 they remove generations from what we would consider the, like the meat of the civil rights struggle they'll get with the whole idea that you're not a victim, you know, nobody's above you. It's about who who God says you are and who you think you are. Yeah. But the older people, they'll give, they'll give me a hard time. That's amazing, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know a, I know a city full of, I know there's a place, I don't want to give, give it away too much, but there's one ministry that I know of full of doctors and lawyers and principals, all African-American, but completely... Uh, racism, prejudice against white people because they feel that white people are holding them back and they got doctor's degrees. And you know, so. I know I, I've noticed that the more degrees that people get, the dumber they become. Mm-hmm. Have, you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you noticed yeah. that? I, I was I, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and and have you spoken? I, I don't know if you know this preacher personally. Have you spoken to him about that? Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for him. And I don't feel that he would change, so I didn't say anything. And but why not love him enough to at least tell him the truth? But if he doesn't accept it, that's on him. You know what? I feel that he's. I, I feel that um, 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should. I'll just give you that. I probably should just love him enough. Maybe that's a lack of love on my part uh, to say something. But my my brain was saying that this man's not going to change. He's stuck in the way he is, and you know he's not going to show racism to white people. But behind the door, behind the uh, closed doors, he'll, he'll mention it. Amazing, huh? Well, I, oh, yeah. I, and and so that's what the devil does. He tries to talk you out of helping people because you see what's going on. You have love for all all people, so you should tell him the truth. And if he doesn't accept it, you, it's not personal. It's not like you're going to get mad at him or try to force it. At least somebody told him the truth about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and I got He, you. I he got might you. think about it later and he might like, you know what? Pastor Johnson was right about that. I'm wrong, you know, because somebody told him the truth without judging him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. Love, that's real love. Yeah, it is. That's amazing. Um, do you believe racism exists? I do. I believe racism exists. I sure do. And, and why do you believe that? Um, uh, I'll say this. It has happened to me. I'm not. A, I'm nobody's victim, but I've experienced it. Uh, you know. So, so if you if you if you define racism as uh, one social group placing themselves above another social group, in their minds, I, I believe it does. I can tell you experiences if you want me to. And so, can you give me one experience? One one. Um, I'll give you one on the, on the business end of things. I believe. No, I'll give you one practical that I know. One day, I, one one day midnight when CVS was open 24 hours, I went to CVS in in, uh, in a city called uh, Round Rock, Texas, to get probably some allergy medicine. I forgot what it was for my family. On the way out, there was a there was a blue and white truck with a Confederate flag that sped to the front of the door as I was coming out. They said to me, they called me the the N word. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on here. They said N word as loud as they could, two Confederate flags, and then they sped off. And um, before I was regenerated, I would have tried to chase them down mad. I would have tried to figure out something to do to hurt them. But I felt sorry for them because I believe, I believe that they too have been deceived by their parents who were deceived by, by Satan. And so was that hatred or racism? Um, I, I would say both of them. But why would you say both? Because raci- racism is fueled by hate. But does God call our battle racist, or he said it's a battle between good and evil? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spirits and principality and wickedness. He called it evil. It's either good or it's evil. Why would you put another title over it rather than exposing the evil of it in hope that they may see what they're doing? Because there's kinds of evil. Like uh, Jesus made a statement one time. Jesus said... Uh, it's not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of a man. And he said, he starts naming these things and he says all kinds of evil. So I, I believe that evil, evil in and of itself is the thing, but there's kinds of evil as well. That's why I termed it racism. But he never called it racist though. He said it's evil. He, he, it was of the devil and he kept it so that people can see and understand. But the world put the titles on it and they call it something that is not. Because as long as you okay. think that it's racism, you're not, you're not going to see that it's the devil at work. Mm. Okay, I can see that. See that. That makes sense? That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, I, I, I would need, I'm going to look at it a little bit more to really see if I change that up. Because, again, I'm thinking, like, it's a kind of evil, you know. But at the same time, if you label it as that, I see what you're saying, yeah. where it gives people view. Yes, because a lot of black people believe that it's racism when it's just evil. It's anger is evil. And, but if they saw it as it really is, then they wouldn't, probably wouldn't be so mad at the person because they realize that people can't help themselves. They're controlled by the devil. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask, did you, was the civil rights movement the worst thing that ever happened to blacks? No. Why not? I don't think so. I think there's far more worse things that happened to blacks uh, beginning from when we when we were in Africa, when we sold each other into slavery. I believe that even now what's happening now, 
uh, how the death rate amongst young adults now, the fatherless generation among young adults right now is far worse. Like it's far worse to eat at yourself than to have somebody else do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Before the civil rights movement, black people were doing very well. They didn't have black leaders. They only trusted in God. They had families. They had fathers and mothers and grandparents. They bought land. They knew that our battle was spiritual, and they treated their neighbors as they would themselves, no matter what the color was. But then the civil rights movement came along, and they deceived the blacks to make them think that racism exists. They couldn't make it. And then they sold the blacks over to the Democratic Party so that they could become the leaders of the Democrats, I mean of the blacks, Martin Luther King and Jesse Jackson and all those crappy people. They became uh, the leader of the blacks. They destroyed the family with the welfare stuff. And it's just been downhill for the blacks ever since then. Isn't that worse than physical slavery? Do you see Martin Luther King as a crappy person? I see that he was a communist and he misled the people for his own personal gain. Okay. Okay. Because he sold, he signed the bill to for the the government and all that stuff. If he meant the people well, he would not have done that. Okay. What do you think okay. about that? So I can't I can't see him as a crappy person. I, I think he I do believe that uh his his policies and the things that he felt that he did for African American people or black people, um, he was moving from conviction, I think that, you know, but I'm, I wasn't in that man's heart. I don't know. I've been taken wrong before. Right. I don't know. And do you see that the blacks have only gotten worse since the civil rights movement and not better? Um, and not all, not all, not all, but most. Uh, uh, say, uh, say it again now. I, I say not all, not all, not all, but most of the blacks have gotten worse since the civil rights movement instead of better. And they were doing much oh, yeah. better prior to the civil rights movement. I, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. And in Detroit, Michigan, where they had Black Bottom, all kinds of African-American businesses, yeah. all kinds of things. Right now, that's a ghost town. Yeah. And um, yeah. So do you see that the civil rights movement screwed them up? Um, I have to look into it to see if that's actually what it is. Um, is it? I, I'm sorry? When I initially look at it, I look at it as a drug epidemic and I look at it as a fatherless generation. So I have to look and see, did the civil rights movement actually do this? Yeah. The Democratic Party. Well, check out Uncle Tom 1 and 2. Have you seen Uncle Tom, the movie? No. Documentary Uncle Tom. Check that out. It lays it out clear. You couldn't miss it. Okay. 